we meet on this Monday, Thursday, we remember Jesus' Last Supper with his disciples. We remember that he took bread and wine as his body and his blood and told the disciples to do this in remembrance of him. But as our Gospel reading will show later, the spotlight is not so much shone on the meal, but on the new commandment that Jesus gives. Today is Maundy Thursday, and the word Maundy is really important. The Latin word for commandment is mandatum, and when it is abbreviated, it becomes Maundy, signifying this evening when our Lord Jesus gives a new commandment to his disciples, that you love one another. The meal and the commandment, the two, go together. Breaking bread shows how far Jesus went to restore our broken relationship with God. Wine poured out demonstrates what it may cost to forgive. We have been loved like this in Jesus Christ by God. Jesus closes by saying, love one another as I have loved you. By this everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. This is the only criteria the quality of our life together needs. It's not whether we know whether to sit or stand during a service. It's not whether we know we've got our doctrine absolutely straight. It's not whether we call the altar an altar or a table, a communion table or a holy table. It's not whether we like new hymns or more traditional, whether we clap raise our hands or use incense or indeed do all three it's whether we can love one another truly love each other as jesus loves us and we know that the love that jesus has for us brought him to the cross and to crucifixion but that's another place and for another day for tomorrow good friday let us pray. O Christ, pouring yourself out, love drained to the last drop, release us from our sins. O Christ, kneeling as a servant, washing the disciples' feet, shocking in your humility, help us to follow in your way. O Christ, taking bread and wine, crystal clear in your awareness of the work you must complete, nourish us in your saving presence. O Christ, entering Gethsemane, falling on your face to pray, uncontainable in your broken heart, strengthen us to share your sufferings. Infinite, intimate God, this night you kneel before us and wash our feet. In awe and wonder, we lay ourselves bare to your redeeming acts of love. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of John. Before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and to go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. 
Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean, and you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example, that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly I tell you, Servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Then Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right to give you thanks, Father most holy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For on this night he girded himself with a towel, and taking the form of a servant, washed the feet of his disciples. He gave us a new commandment, that we should love one another as he has loved us. Knowing that his hour had come, in his great love he gave this supper to his disciples, to be a memorial of his passion, that we might proclaim his death until he comes again, and feast with him in his kingdom. Therefore, earth unites with heaven to sing a new song of praise. We too join with angels and archangels as they proclaim your glory without end. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine, again he praised you, gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me.
So Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence, his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross, bringing before you the bread of life and the cup of salvation. We proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Christ is the bread of life. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, Lord Jesus, until you come in glory. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people, gather us in your loving arms and bring us with the Blessed Mary, Saint Elphin and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. This is the table not of the church, but of the Lord. It has been made ready for those who love him and who want to love him more. So come, you who have much faith, and you who have little, you who have tried to follow, and you who have failed. Come not because I invite you, it is our Lord, and it is his will that those who seek him will find him here. body of Christ, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The blood of Christ, keep you in eternal life. Amen. They went to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter and James and John, and began to be distressed and agitated. And he said to them, I am deeply grieved even to death. Remain here and keep awake. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed that, if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. He said, Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me, Yet not what I want, but what you want. He came and found them sleeping, and he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep awake one hour? Keep awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again he went away and prayed, saying the same words. And once more he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy, and they did not know what to say to him. He came a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Enough, the hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. 
See, my betrayer is at hand. Immediately while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, and with him was a crowd with swords and clubs, from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him, and lead him away under guard. So when he came, he went up to Jesus at once and said, Rabbi, and kissed him. Then they laid hands on him and arrested him. One of those who stood near drew his sword and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. And Jesus said to them, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me, as though I were a bandit? Day after day I was with you in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. But let the scriptures be fulfilled. All of them deserted him and fled. 